<laughs> Hello. Yeah, we're just talking. We're like, okay, let's just start. <laughs> <laughs> that happens a lot. We'll get into a conversation and be talking for a few minutes, and Kelly's like, well, let's do this. <laughs> yeah, because he'll say such good stuff, and I'm like, we need to be sharing these things. And so, yeah, because we were talking about I found this scripture that I really like that I've got hanging up to remind me all the time because I get caught up in like food and drink and you know I mean we talk a lot about food on here you know so y'all are probably aware of that for us you know and so there's a scripture it's in Romans chapter 14 17 and it says that for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. And that scripture, like, it has so much in it. And Corey had pointed out something, which, I mean, it's it's the letter of the law versus the spirit of the law. You know, we get so caught up in the letter of the law and doing everything so perfectly and like we have to and and it it's it, it goes to so many areas of our life and and food is one of those big areas of life for myself you know like there's just so many rules and laws and just so many things about like food and drink and what we should put into our body and what we shouldn't put into our body and we get so wrapped up in the in those those things and we forget about the spirit of it like we forget about just the what what feels good like in a righteous good way you know not what feels good pleasurable to my body you know because I mean but like what feels righteous and good and brings joy and brings peace to us you know it's not about the it's not about being vegan or vegetarian or being you know eating all meat or you know we just get so caught up on all these different performances and acts in all areas of life yeah it's just it's so fascinating to really ponder and to think about and so that was just something that I thought that we could discuss for a little bit here I don't know if I sent you the text but the other day I ate a really good hamburger mm -hmm. I thought yeah, yeah. about sending you the text you did. but mm -hmm. I don't eat meat um I mean like rarely do I eat meat and yeah, me uh I just knew that after some meditation I knew that I needed I could just feel in my body that I needed a hamburger whatever it is about a hamburger I mean it is it, I didn't and... need red meat I needed a hamburger <laughs> maybe that was my just body or my mind craving that specific food but I knew that it's what I needed um, but you know, I'm I'm not a vegan or even a vegetarian, any type of vegetarian, but uh, you know, the eating eating meat every single day, all day, multiple times throughout the day. Um, who am I to judge anybody that's that's doing that because they might have a deficiency in their body where they actually need that for themselves so yeah the spirit of the law and the letter of the law I mean it's it's such a that is that is where I come to being judgmental of anybody mm -hmm. how can I judge anybody I mean there were times where my mom needed a coffee because of digestive issues and it wasn't like she was drinking coffee because she liked drinking coffee um and as a member of the church of jesus christ of latter-day saints we don't drink coffee you know every morning to wake up but uh that is just such a, you know, teas and even tobacco can, 
can have its purpose. You know, there's so many things that that God has given us that we know aren't good for the body to use on a regular basis, but they can be helpful for our body. And so for me to see somebody doing something and think to myself, oh, well, why are they doing that? I, well, I mean, that's, who am I to judge anybody for doing anything? Because they really might need that, you know, that mm -hmm. might be something their body is telling them that they need to partake of. So... And that's where I think we can recognize for ourselves, like become aware that if we're, if we're being judgmental about things, we're in the law. We're not in the spirit of it. We're in the law of it. It's so interesting. Um, so we are members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And so we come from that tradition and that belief system. And it is our belief that that Jesus Christ, that he has restored, we, he has restored his gospel here upon the earth during this time. And with that restoration, he has restored all of his gospel, all the way back to Adam. And there is so much more that he's going to continue to restore because not everything has been restored. Like we don't have the power of resurrection. You know, I mean, that is something that like, that only he has, that there are people, there are people who have been resurrected already. We know that. And that is a power that was given to them. And so it's like, there are things that just have not been restored to man yet, but he has restored, he has restored a lot. And part of that restoration, you know, if you think about it, it goes all the way back to Adam. So we're looking at, at Adam and Enoch, and we're looking at Moses, like the law of Moses, which Jesus Christ came to free the people from the law of Moses. But in the restoration of his gospel in these days, he restored kind of like a, a law of Moses type thing, you know, giving us certain commandments, giving us, especially for Latter-day Saints, giving us like the word of wisdom. I mean, it's almost like a law of, of commandments to live by and to, to do, you know, we don't eat, you know, we're, we're asked not to eat a lot of meat, you know, we're encouraged, encouraged not to eat a lot of meat. Um, you know, we're told that alcohol is bad for our bodies, which we know that, um, that tea, that coffee, that different things that we take into our bodies are just not good for us. And so, you know, he's given us this information. He's given us this knowledge. And that and herbs and grains and certain things are really are, good for us. Right. And so we, there's, there's things that we are encouraged to eat for mm -hmm. our bodies. And so, so there's just things that we have been given in this world today that are kind of like the laws and rules of Moses, if you, if you think about it like that. And so what I have found that is that a lot of people that we get stuck in those laws and in those performances mm -hmm. and in checking the check marks and, and it's like we, we judge ourselves and we judge others by these things and, and it, and we're living by the law. And Jesus Christ came into this world to free us from the law from and, and has like provided us with mercy and with grace and forgiveness and has provided like a the spirit. He's provided like, you know, and, and it's like those things are important. You know, it's important for us to take care of our bodies. Those things, he's given us knowledge and, and understanding and wisdom in these areas to, to free us, truly, so that we don't become addicted to these things. You know, but we get so caught up in, like, 
judge the judgment of it and being so strict with ourselves and so strict with other people and then we get judgmental of other people and we just lose the whole spirit of you know just doing what brings peace into our hearts and what brings joy you know it's like yeah it is all he wants is our heart <laughs> yeah, I mean that's I mean, all truly, all I mean, he truly. wants is our heart and all that God wants is for us to to follow the spirit you know there is a there is a law I mean there are specific things that we know if if we do them it's going to harm us and it's just a simple book, a simple guideline on how how can I avoid burning my hand on the stove as a little child? And you know, God has given us that knowledge. Uh and it's not like if you don't do certain things, you're damned. If you don't do certain things, you're going to burn in hell. Uh it's just not so black and white. There's such a there's such a huge difference between the Pharisees and Sadducees following what is it the 609 laws that we have to do every single thing or you're damned you're going to hell but through Christ's blood and through the shedding uh, and through through him giving his life there's there's just there's so many things that changed that were didn't change that were fulfilled mm -hmm. that were completed through him and so it's okay for me to make my bed on Sunday you know I mean just a dumb example like that it's okay for me to do certain things that you know, uh, they felt like they were going to burn in hell forever if they did those things. And it's just not, you know, uh, I've been thinking a lot about the, I mean, this year there's going to be hundreds of new Christian religions pop up that, you know, it's like constantly there's new religions um, new Christian denominations that somebody sees a specific thing that they don't agree with so they go and start their own religion and it's just there's so much confusion and just so much division and it's like how how can anybody say okay you don't go to my church and you don't follow exactly what i follow sorry buddy you're not gonna make it you're gonna go to hell <laughs> and it's like whoa i mean i guess uh i guess i'm going to hell and i'm gonna be with a lot of people that i love <laughs> you know yeah but uh they're there's so much that we don't know, mm -hmm. but the Spirit, the Holy Ghost can really guide us and, and help us know or help us avoid the consequences of doing things that are going to harm us. Uh, it's, there's such a, there's such a loving feeling behind the the spirit of what God is doing and instead of the law that so many people get caught up on and so many people get caught up on if I don't do x y and z well then I'm just not going to make it mm -hmm. you know so then it's like what's the point yeah i mean i I was thrown in the towel a long time ago, you know? Uh, but I understand that there's just no... 
there's nowhere I can get without without a way back. God has provided that for us. And if I b really believed in just simply the letter of the law, mm. then then I'm I'm done. Yeah. I mean, there's no point in this. I'm going to just go hang I mean, out and just party. Like the laws, you know, we've talked about in previous videos, like God is law. Like that is who, what he is. Like he, there is law. You know, our universe is run by laws. I mean, it keeps order. It keeps mm -hmm. things, you know, how they're supposed to be. Um, and laws, it's like they, they give us guidance. They give us freedom. Mm. Laws free us. And it's really like, but they can also put us into a box. They can put us into a prison cell and they can keep us stuck and trapped and beating ourselves up and in a place of so much judgment and damnation and guilt and shame and hurt and pain. And internal Jesus Christ, and external judgment. Yes, and Jesus Christ came and he freed us from that. He mm -hmm. opened up that box. He he I mean he he just freed us from the judgment of the law. He gave us his grace and his mercy. You know, but that doesn't, that doesn't t obliterate the law. You know, it doesn't mean that, that the laws aren't important and that the laws aren't there for us to help us, but they're just not, they're not there to condemn us and to keep us stuck, you know, in that box in that way. And, you know, like I, it's, I, I learned as I grew up, I just, I learned the way that I learned and a lot of what I was taught was so much based on and focused on the law and teaching. And I, I, I feel, you know, and it could have been incorrectly taught to me and, and I incorrectly learned it because as I come to understand things today, it's like, wait, that's not what, like, that's not what this, with the church, that's not what Jesus says. And then, but it's like people, I have learned that. You know, and but that doesn't mean that that is Jesus's way and God's way, and so. But I have learned a lot of just living the law, like being so strict with myself and not doing this and not doing that, and having to do all these other things so perfectly. And and if I don't, then you know, e, you know, that judgment comes in, and. And that's where I know that I've lived so much of my life in the law because I have been in so much judgment my whole life, judging myself and judging others for what they're doing. Even if like <coughs> I have not felt like a judgmental person throughout my life because I'm very, I feel very loving and accepting and, and stuff with other people. And at the same time, I know because I have so much judgment within myself I know that, you know, I have judgment towards others. You know, if I see someone else doing something that I'm like, oh, they shouldn't be doing that. I mean, that is a judgment. Who am I to say what anybody should or should not be doing? Yeah. That's my own thing. Yeah. It's so easy to judge people and not even know that we're doing it. Not yeah. even recognize that we're doing it. But, you know, so I've, I've said a lot of times, like, I don't have much of a problem with judging and I need to take that back because it is there's times where we judge people and we don't even know that we're doing it like I just said but I uh I really have been in so many places that it's really hard for me to judge somebody else I mean it's like I mean I see me and, right. and whenever I see other people doing thing, it's that saying in AA, like, but for the grace of God, there go I, you know, right. I mean, it's, there's so many, there are very few things that I see going on around me that I can't say that was me once upon a time. So it's really hard for me to judge. And then it, I become judgmental of myself because it's like, but I knew I shouldn't be doing those things. 
But I knew. But did I really know? You know? I know. It's like I was taught, but there was a long period before I actually knew or even understood. You know, when Kelly was just talking, I was thinking a lot like she was taught, I was taught, but was I really taught those things or is it just what I'd learned? Right. You know, is I that know. just the things that I internalized due to my environment around me? And people do teach us things incorrectly because this is what they learned and it yes, just gets passed sure. on and passed on. I know. I was talking to my son this past week and he's going through his own kind of recovery and, and healing process and and it's like I hear him and the things that he's going through and struggling with and, and I'm just like I taught him that, you know, yes. and it's like, yeah. oh, it's so hard to to see, <coughs> you know. But back to, I mean, that could, that's a whole other no, that's conversation. So, such but a good but point, we just though. we learn so much that's just so incorrectly, and and I've taught him the things that I learned incorrectly, and so it's just been passed down to him. And but thankfully today, it's like I'm so aware of so much and now my children I'm showing them and they're seeing and so they're at a young age able to do this work and remove all the the lies that we've been taught in this world so that we can be freed and you know and part of that is just really truly coming to see and coming to understand the differences between the law and the spirit you know and as i as i surrender my days and i surrender my life over to god like more and more and i just am asking for him to just fill me with love like every day i'm just like i just want to be more loving towards myself and to other people and, you know, as I open myself up to that, it, it really, it's teaching and showing me the spirit, just the, the spirit, like the spirit driving things. And um, it's just so different. And I catch myself and I see myself now where I'm caught up in the letter of the law. You know, and, and I have grace with myself now and, mm -hmm. like, patience with myself. Because I'm unlearning a lifetime of things that I've just learned incorrectly. Yeah. It would be so easy just to ignore, you know, what you taught your children and just let them learn that's what they need to learn. You know, just to let it be... But it is so freeing to let our kids know, like, look, we're all on this journey together. I'm, I am working on learning these things as well. Mm -hmm. You know, I taught, I taught you a certain way and I'm learning that it's not a way to live. It's not right. a way to live judging myself constantly. And I mean, all it, all that I need to do is at the end of the day do an inventory of where did I go wrong what did I do right today you know not right or wrong but what things were pro progressive in my life today and what things held me back today and you know did I follow the spirit did I follow God's calling in my life did I do the things that he was asking me to do and what can I do tomorrow if there are things that I did incorrectly today what can I do tomorrow to make those things right and you know a lot of it would be really easy just to look at the letter and say okay I did X I did A B C I did these things exactly right mm -hmm. check off the check mark I mean I, filled good today. The I did it but the spirit doesn't have these boxes mm -hmm. to check off the spirit just has a blank page that says, <laughs> how am I living? It's the, it goes back to the scripture, having peace and joy. Like, you know how you're living if you have peace and joy in your life. Yeah. You know, and in the word righteousness, you know, it says righteousness. And I think that 
I know for myself that it makes me think of church. It makes me think of kind of religion and like righteous people and like pedestal and all that kind of stuff. But it's not. Like righteous is just right. It's correct. It's good. It's goodness. It's just those things that feel good. Um, it's just, and you know it, like, you know it in your simple. soul, <laughs> whether you're doing something that feels righteous or unrighteous. Yeah. And it has nothing to do with a religion. It, it has to do with your soul feeling good or not good. <laughs> I mean, that's yeah. all it is. And it's like living in the spirit is just that is it's the fruits of the spirit mm -hmm. it's it's that feeling of righteousness and not the feeling of oh i'm better than everybody else i'm so righteous but just a feeling of just like i'm good mm -hmm. like i'm good with me mm -hmm. and i have peace and i have joy yeah. i sat with with one of my children um my son this past Saturday morning, actually, and I was talking to him, and, you know, I, I asked him, you know, I, I just, I, I wanted to let him know that he could come to me with anything, that I'm not going to judge him, and there's nothing that he can do for me to look and see him as better, and there's nothing he can do to make me see him as worse, that he is... I just love him and it doesn't there's nothing that's going to change that and I wanted him to to just to understand that I'm there for him that I'm not here to to judge him in any way you know he's a kid he's he's growing up and he's gonna make mistakes and as I was telling him these things like I could I could feel that we were really connecting and you know that that is the one thing that I have really tried I haven't tried that's something that I have really worked on instilling in my kids is the spirit of the law that you know that I mean if we taught them like these things are going to send you to hell and these things are going to save you then I mean, nah. they just be in constant torment and fear. fear. Yeah, yeah, it's just so much pain. And I don't want my kids to grow up that way. I want mm -hmm. them to know that with my limited ability to love and my limited ability to even forgive and, you know, with just all my limit, limits in being human... There's, I want my kids to know there's nothing they can do that's going to change my love for them. And if they can really know that and come to understand that, then their relationship with God is mm -hmm. something that I can be at peace with. Because I know that that is where my true peace comes from, is having a father that not only did he teach me things, but he has lived in his imperfect way of showing me how much my Heavenly Father loves me. Mm -hmm. And that's why we have the Spirit in our lives. You know, we were talking the other day that everybody has access to the Spirit. Everybody in the world has access to that guide to uh, to to the Holy Ghost to the Spirit to help them um, recognize truth and to to live in a better way mm -hmm. and there's no specific people in this world that have like the secret combination <laughs> right. to access this everybody has it mm -hmm.
Yes, yes. So. There's so many men as I as I'm out there in the world, like searching and seeking and learning and growing and stuff. I mean, there are so many societies that claim to have this secret knowledge, this secret path, the mysteries of you know and of <laughs> everything. And it's just like all these mystery schools, and and you can spend hundreds and thousands of dollars to learn mm -hmm. this secret knowledge. And it's like just connect with God. Just connect with the Spirit and let Him teach you what He wants to teach you and how He wants to teach you. It's just incredible. Mm. I love the Spirit, though. I love the way that, like, you know, He is showing me. And He does guide me. Like, I, I am learning so much about so many different philosophies and traditions and things that it is just solidifying my understanding and my testimony of Jesus Christ. And I'm just like, I love that. I love the fact that the, that discernment, it just, it, it repels, like, it's like a magnet, like anything that just doesn't align with God and with Jesus Christ. It's just, I'm so aware of it today. And I'm just like, eh, <laughs> you know, I just love it. Yeah. And there are so many people that abandon their belief in God and just leave it all behind because of so many different reasons. But just like you were saying, as I continue to learn, uh, it does. It just solidifies my own testimony of this perfect man that walked amongst us that truly taught us the only thing that matters is love the only thing that really matters at the end of the end of the day is how did you treat the people in your life how did you treat those around you it's not did you follow commandment number 603 right you know and he did certain things in specific ways on purpose to upset those people that needed to wake up mm -hmm. to to help people realize that it's not the letter it is the spirit it's not following all these specific commandments that are going to get us to heaven it's following the spirit and allowing the Spirit to guide us in our life. And if we do that, then we will sleep well at night. Mm -hmm. yeah. I love the Spirit in my life today. I, I love it. And uh, I was watching something the other day that said, I would never give this up for any, you know, there's these just absolutes. And um, I'm grateful to know that I will never in this life be severed from my connection to God mm -hmm. like I don't ever have to be <clears throat> I don't ever have to be disconnected from the from the spirit in my life I can always always turn to him and I can always turn to my savior and he's always there for us no matter what church you go to, no matter what it is that you believe in, no matter what church you don't go to, I mean, even if you don't go to any church, if you find nature or whatever, I mean, we all have access. Mm -hmm. We all have access to, to what God has given us. And yeah, again, nobody has some kind of special secret some kind of special knowledge that only them and their little group of people are gonna make it at the end of the day god loves us way too much to allow that to be the case and i am i'm just so grateful for a heavenly father that loves me specifically and probably shakes his head at times and just says man Corey, come, come on, on. <laughs> <laughs> come on kelly <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah yeah but he's so patient oh he is yeah. so patient he loves us so much yeah oh 
Yeah. Truly. All we gotta do is... I love him. ...want to do the next right thing and to keep our eye on him. And the Spirit will guide us and, and yep. help us, assist us in doing what is right. And doing what is going to help us in our life. Not what's right or wrong. Because what's right and what's going to help me in my life today might be completely wrong in somebody else's eyes. Right. You know? Mm -hmm. So, that just takes you back to just don't judge anybody. Mm -hmm. What is the Spirit telling you in your life? Mm -hmm. And who am I to tell you that you're wrong? Right. So, yeah. To each his own. I mean, that there are laws, as we've said, but there are definitely, definitely things that certain people need in their life that I am not. Thank goodness, I don't have to go around and tell people that they're doing things right or wrong. Mm. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh -uh. That is not my uh -uh. calling. Thank goodness. <laughs> exactly. And you know, and the fruit, the fruit of that spirit is again, is what we have said before in that scripture. It's joy and peace. Yeah. And so, if you have joy and peace in your life, I mean, that is the spirit. Yeah. It's the spirit. And, and I, if you don't have it, then look at your life assess like well, why do I not have joy and peace in my life and start just looking at little things that you can change to bring more joy into your life ask the spirit to help mm. you and he will and he is so gentle and so kind and so loving and showing us ways that we can have him in our lives more yeah. you know it's just it's making the next good Right, Positive. righteous. Like yeah. I mean, I don't know. I don't know yeah, what word right. to use, but yeah. I mean, it says in the scripture, "righteous." So I'll use yeah. that word, but it's there's, just whatever helps us to feel good. There's something good. that I love that it, I think you listened to it too. But the fruit that you're talking about, that you know, you pull off the tree and you bite down on it, and it's just so delicious, and there's nobody that could tell me that this fruit is not good because I'm sitting here eating it. Mm -hmm. it's and so juicy and sweet. Yeah. And <laughs> then somebody comes up to me and tells me, well, that, that tree is a bad tree. The roots, if you go back to the roots and you really look at it, that is a bad tree. I'm just going to laugh at him. Say, man, this fruit is delicious. You please have some. Yeah, taste it. I know yeah. what you're telling me about the roots, but I really don't care because this tree is absolutely delicious. The fruit is the fruit that it produces is delicious. So, you yeah. know the it's all about following the spirit mm -hmm. and you know if if the fruit is delicious and it brings joy into my life and it, it makes me want to be a better person it's gotta be good it's <laughs> gotta be good and it's gonna be really hard to convince me otherwise so there's no I'm not gonna dig up that tree and risk killing it just because somebody told me that there's something deep down that is isn't good because mm -hmm. I'm just going to enjoy the fruit that it's bearing that's the spirit is telling me this is a delicious fruit and I feel like the best thing that I can do is share it mm -hmm. and so here we are Going long yep. as always. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta go to work. Yeah. I love y'all. It's a beautiful day. And if the spirit is guiding you to do something and some man steps in and says, That is wrong, 
I would go with the spirit before <laughs> I go yeah. with the flesh. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. Absolutely. Follow Good the point. spirit. Yep. Have a wonderful day. Bye, y'all.